Hello children, welcome to the YouTube channel Guru of Social. Today's our topic is about class 6 Pedamakuru, continuing with the topic crops. So, in the previous video, we have discussed about soils and the types of soils and the factory irrigational facilities. So, with the conclusion of these two topics, soils and irrigational facilities, now it's the time to focus on the topic crops. So, what actually they are giving the information here about paddy. Paddy is the raw stage of rice. So, this is mostly such a regular produce which we require to be used in our daily life among our regular diet. It may be minimum or maximum. So definitely we are expecting this paddy to be grown among the coastal plains extensively. Among the coastal plains extensively. What do you mean by extensively here? More. So more paddy is grown in coastal plains as well as in Krishna district. Especially in Krishna district. Where our village Penamakuru is located. And why actually they are growing among these coastal plains or Krishna district because requirement of water when you try to focus right from the nursery stage of the crop till the harvesting stage of this crop requires more water. We are very clear in the previous videos that irrigational facilities are really good. We took many options like river Krishna, right? And even the, we are diverting that water of river Krishna through many man-made canals. Other than that, through tanks, through wells, bore wells, etc. So, when you are expecting such a good availability of irrigational facilities or supply of water to the fields, definitely the farmers can focus on extensive sowing of paddy. So, among these plains of east coastal plains and especially in Krishna district, paddy is extensively grown or cultivated. Extensively cultivated. So, when you are coming to the point of, they again focused on what? Even to be focused on lie, that is low lying areas. Yes, low lying areas. What you call these low lying areas? Yes, palam. Palam is defined to the referring word as low lying areas among these low lying areas of the coastal plains or the Krishna district whatever you are expecting paddy is grown extensively and they focused on high yielding varieties of paddy high yielding varieties of paddy here paddy means we know very well they are telling that high yielding varieties of paddy. High yielding means what? High means you know large or more. Yielding means what? Giving a good produce. Extensive produce. Yield means producing. When they are focusing on this high yielding varieties of paddy. They have given the variety details like. MTU 2716 Swarna BPT. These are the 
paddy varieties which the farmers have decided to be cultivated among the coastal plains and among the krishna district where they are having good irrigational facilities that's the reason they have expected and decided to grow only high yielding varieties of pad and in this now we have to focus on crops which are sown as per the seasons so depending on the availability of irrigational facilities farmers have focused on sowing the crops when you are coming to the monsoon season what we have discussed here june to october monsoon season is arrived so definitely now the farmer has to focus on this period only this monsoon crops can be called as salva the crops which are grown during the monsoon season that crops are called as salva crops so what did they do here as soon as the monsoon enters or arrives the nursery the nursery paddy crop is sown as a salva crop nursery stage of means what actually here they will take the field area and they will go with the nursery crop of paddy yes the farmers will take the seeds and go with the process of nursery crop of paddy cultivation as soon as they get the nursery crop stage of paddy the new shoots of the seeds related to the paddy varieties of high yielding varieties when they confirm that the nursery paddy crop is ready immediately in the month of june they go for the transplantation they take the new shoots of the paddy grains which is at the nursery stage and immediately prefer that the mode of transplantation the mode of transplantation children most of you think that directly the seeds will be sown and the crops will be grown that's absolutely wrong the first stage of cultivation starts with the sowing of the paddy grains they will take a piece of land and go for the nursery paddy seeds to be sown among the fields after getting the new shoots which you are confirming as the nursery crop of paddy or the baby stage of paddy crop immediately as soon as the monsoon period arrives they will take the nursery the baby stage of the paddy crop and they will separate the baby crops and transplant them in order that is why we can observe we can speculate how periodically they are being transplanted the baby crops are planted here as it is as it is the second stage of planting the crop that is why we are using the word transplantation are you clear now so first they go for the nursery stage of the paddy crop to sow the seeds after confirming the new baby shoots or baby crops of paddy are grown well 
immediately take that and separate them and go with the second stage of plantation okay and this mode of plantation is called as transplantation means they are transferring the baby plants of first stage cropping to the second stage this mode of agricultural operation will be mostly preferred only by women till now we have noticed that yes now it's a time to discuss as transplantation has come we have to focus on agricultural operations agricultural operations so what they are actually doing first they will prefer to plow the land what do you mean by plow they will prepare the field or make it ready for the next or a new crop to be planted so what they will do this field might have been used for the previous crop which is not ready or getting priorly in the stage to go with the second crop so they have to prepare this field for the next crop they will make the use of plow this is an agricultural instrument which they will fix with the number of iron plows which are fixed to a single rod and they will fix this for the back side of their tractors or even they will use the animals yes domestic animals like cows buffaloes etc okay you can uh, have an idea of this for example these are the animals okay and here you can see a long wooden plank connected with the plow and there will be the farmer who hold it and make the use of manual operation here little bit technology is advanced along with the manual operation to be continued so this mode of plows the agricultural iron tools are used to break the layers of the soils first so they will plow them in the order yes so that the depth layers of the soils which are been completely filled with the previous crops and penetrated roots which are been dried up will be coming out with the process of plowing and the enrichment of the soils will get prepared with the new layers to be presented there so this is called as plow and the next if you are going to consider threshing threshing after getting the final crop into the hand the farmers will dry the crop and take the bunch of the crop in their hands and manually they prefer beating of the crop on a big rock or a stone so that in this process they are able to separate the grains from the harvested or the last stage of the crop from which they can have the collection or gathering of the grains this is the manual operation nowadays they are going to be preferred with an advanced automated functioning of the wheel in which they are going to keep the harvested crops in that wheel it will be rotating automatically children with the electric power in which they will creep the food crops and get the separation of the grains of course human operation is little bit participated along with the advanced functioning of the devices and this are you clear which are plow and threshing next yes already we discussed transplantation sowing of seeds plowing threshing transportation 
Yes, this is also a part of agricultural operation. So here, transplantation, we have already confirmed, will be done by the woman. Plowing will be, nowadays mostly men and women both are participating. Threshing also with the advanced uh, operation of the devices, with very less participation of the human operations. Both male and female are been carrying on this operation. And uh, transportation, mainly they will be preferring by the men. But nowadays without any differences, male and female are giving their participation in the transportation of the grains to the market. And the next you can go for harvesting, you are very clear children. It is nothing but mostly done by male and female. Male and female, both men and women are participating in this. This is nothing but the last stage of the crop. The last stage of the crop. It's a time to get the crop into the hand. So this harvesting mode of agricultural operation is preferred mostly by male and female. Are you clear about the agricultural operations? So now it's a time to discuss about one more crop season. We have already discussed about monsoon here. Now it's a time to discuss about, it's a rainy crop season, right? Now it's a time to discuss about winter crop season. So our previous discussion is about rainy crop season. So what is the rainy crop season we have discussed here or the monsoon crop season with the arrival? Yes, salva. Now it's a time to discuss about winter crop season. So this winter crop season we are expecting, yes, what you can call it, even you can uh, call it as salva, now it's a time to refer it as dalva. So dalva means exactly we can define the crops which are encouraged to be sown at the time of winter crop season, at the time of December month. So mostly the farmers prefer the December month to be, go with the dalva, now here Dalva means in this once if we focus dal means pulses. But the farmers of Penamakuru not only pulses but also they focused on sowing or cultivation of the paddy. Because of good uh, irrigational facilities and good fertile soils they are preferring as a time being decision is taken to grow either pulses or paddy. But after Few years, nowadays if we observe still, the Penamakuru farmers have decided not to even prefer the pulses or paddy. They are going to prefer sugar cane. Because it requires good water and penetrate very good deep into the soils. Penetrating means they go very deep. The roots of this crop are expecting to be penetrated very deeply and requires good water facilities, nothing but irrigation. And anyhow we are having a good fine fertile soils among the Penamakuru. So these all made the farmers of Penamakuru to go with the decision of the December month the Dalva crop we shall go with the sugar cane. And by the time of February, March, they get the final stage of the crop. Yes, the harvesting of sugarcane can be expected by the month of February and March. And immediately, the roots which are being penetrated very deeply are expected to have a second crop to be continued. The same sugarcane at the time of winter crop season which you are calling it as dalva. Are you clear? And coming to the uplands of Penamakuru village, the farmers are even growing banana, sugar cane, yam, etc. These are the crops they are decided to be grown because of good irrigational facilities. And 
these crops they are not using or consuming of their own they preferred to grow these crops to sell them in the nearby markets now it's a time here to discuss crops are also again classified into two types children shall we children crops are classified into two types one is food crops another is commercial crops the farmers when they are preferring to grow the specified crops for their own use or for their own consume they can be considered as food crops or even one more term domestic crops also you can term it you can even term it as domestic crops means the crops which are grown only for their own consumption can be defined as food crops or domestic crops the crops which are sown only for say or for cash purpose the crops can be defined as commercial crops or even you can term it as cash crops are you clear by this and at the same time we have to even focus that mostly in olden days the farmers of penamakuru they used the uplands to grow the red gram green gram etc but as we decided in the previous discussion nowadays actually they require very less water children upland regions means we know very well sandy soils what is their nature very clear in the previous videos we have discussed that they don't have a good fine and fertile soils we don't have to be expected any retain factors of moisture among these soils they get dried up very soon but these farmers nowadays as they felt that having good irrigational facilities among the plants they decided to grow the commercial crops yes what are those you are expecting fruits nothing but development of orchards we have already discussed the fields which are used to grow the fruits as well as sugarcane banana yam etc because of good irrigational facilities they took a decision of growing the commercial crops and they have sold out in the nearby markets like kuyur are you clear right it's a time now to have a conversation that if you are having any doubts regarding the discussed topics of all these videos related to the permakuru lesson please put in the comment box section and now it will be continued with the next topic thank you please subscribe for more information to be gathered children